Welcome back friends and happy Tuesday. This week I thought I'd talk about a couple of different types of seams. As I was going through my closet I realized that I have used several different types of seams for different types of apparel and I wondered it seems like I haven't told you about any of them. I'm a horrible friend. So here we go. I'm going to talk to you about a few basic seams that you may or may not know. Want to hang out? Let's do it. I'm Nye with Sally and Max. Come along, friends. <laughs> got here fast. <laughs> How'd you get here faster than I did? Little extra coffee? Mm? Yeah. Mm. A little extra tea in your cup today? Okay. So during this sewing sesh, what I decided is that I'm going to sew the seams myself and I will show you them here in a window so you can watch me actually sew the seams. Because I am a woman of action, okay? I don't just be sitting around and let other people do my seams. <laughs> no, but Honestly, I just wanted you to be able to see them while I describe them. Let's talk about those seams. The first seam I'm going to talk to you about is the plain seam. Now the plain seam is pretty basic. You're just basically going to do a straight stitch across your fabric. We're not talking about finishing, but we're just talking about the seam itself. Now some of these seams may have finishing touches, but not the plain seam. The plain seam is just basically sewing a straight stitch across your fabric with your fabric right sides together. You must remember to note that for thicker fabric, lengthen your stitch. And for thinner fabric, you can, do, you can use a shorter stitch. You don't want to break your seams, right? We already had this talk last week. We don't want clothes falling off in public because we use the wrong seam length, right? Okay, because Nancy would just love that. Now here's a seam you may or may not know about. It's called the hairline seam. A hairline seam is very similar to a French seam, but it uses a zigzag to enclose your raw edges. A hairline seam is very helpful when you're sewing things like transparent fabric or something like a silk or an organza because it's a very, very narrow seam. So essentially, you're gonna sew your fabric together, you're gonna trim your raw edges very, very close. You're going to sandwich those inside out, iron it, and then zigzag over it. And then when you open up your fabric, voila, you've got a seam. And your raw edges are enclosed, so it's not going to come apart. One thing to note when using the hairline seam strategy, you want to make sure that when you're pressing your fabric, you actually use a pressing cloth because you want to protect that fabric, right? We don't want to burn holes in it. We're trying to sew it together, not take it apart, okay? <laughs> Next, let's move on to the French seam. The French seam is so fancy, okay? No. <laughs> it, it sounds super fancy, but it's really not that difficult. Essentially, you will sew your fabric, and this part is confusing because if you don't do this, you're going to be mad at yourself, right? <laughs> you want to sew your, your fabric wrong sides together. Then once you have sewn them wrong sides together, you want to trim your raw edges. Then you fold your fabric over, press it, and sew again another straight stitch. This straight stitch is going to allow your raw edges to be enclosed in your seam very similar to the hairline seam, which uses a zigzag stitch instead of a straight stitch. Boom. Now a French seam can be used on a lot of items. I like to use them when I'm using rayon chalice on the inside of my dresses because I really like the look of the fabric folded over rather than a serged seam. One thing to note about the French seam is that it must be used on straight seams only. You cannot use an effective French seam on an armhole because you're going to have a lot of gathering of fabric. It's just going to bunch, bunch, bunch up, Nancy, and you're just not going to be a happy person when you're done. The next seam we'll talk about is the welt seam. The welt seam is just basically sewing your fabric like you normally would, cutting part of your seam allowance, folding the fabric over, and sewing over that. 
You can even sew another parallel line to make it look like a flat cell if you like. This is another way to enclose your raw edges for the most part if you don't have a serger but you want to have neat seams. Don't forget to lengthen your stitches if you're using a thicker fabric. And the last seam that we're going to talk about is the faux French seam. Now I know you're probably like, what do you mean? Like, I already know about the French seam. I don't want a faux. Well, sometimes you just got to go for a faux, okay? A faux French seam is instead of sewing your wrong sides together, you're going to sew your right sides together. Then you're going to take your seam allowance, fold it in towards your original seam, press them together, and then sew it again across the edges. Now, it may look like a French seam, but a French seam isn't going to have that stitch running parallel to your original stitch on the end of your enclosure for your uh, raw edges. So basically you're sandwiching your raw edges inside of your seam allowance. What kind of seams do you know about? Seems to me you now have several new seams in your back pocket. I shared that with you because we're friends. And next week we'll work on something else. Thanks for hanging out with me this week. If you like my content, please, please remember to subscribe, comment, share with your friends, and like. Because I'm going to be here every Tuesday just to make sure that you saw the thing. Yes. Bye.